Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our November 28th edition of Wall Street Winners. Let's dive right in. So we we still have we got we got a little bit of the dip that I was talking about. We've rallied back up, we've made new highs on the S&P. And so you can see the purple arrow shows a clear bull market. That's the most important thing you can look at when you're analyzing a market. What is the clear trend? But then you can see the purple predictor, which is on balance volume, is going sideways. In other words, the smart money is not buying this rally. <laughs> I'm buying this rally, but the smart money's not. Not, huh, what does that make me? Well, anyway, nonetheless, we're not getting the confirmation from the smart money. So that means that this rally is a weak rally at this point. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at the Dow. Also making new highs. Look at this. These are the highest prices we've been at since April. So that's a pretty strong bull market. But, 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 but wait, look at the RSI. That's this little green line right here. We're back above 70. And whenever we get above 70, look at it. Here we are here drop down over 70 huge drop down so i think we're going to be having another one of these little dribble downs build some more value in the market not a big deal let's take a look in the black box up at the top here here you can see the green line which is buying pressure we're up here which is pretty unsustainable we did get above it over here but you can see when we get up to this level buyers run out of gas and so there's bullish exhaustion and as a result even though the sellers are not selling look at this selling pressure is declining we're going to probably see a little bit of a sell-off here so okay look for that little bit of a sell-off it's still a bull market so we want to stay on the long side but i'm just telling you what's going to happen next week now the nasdaq is still the weakest of the three big indices. The other indices have broken the highs that we made back in August. NASDAQ's not even close to those highs. And the purple predictor is still a problem. Look for the NASDAQ to continue to underperform, but I think it's going to start to outperform um, January. Now, why January? Because the NASDAQ has more small cap stocks in it than the S&P 500 by definition. And we normally see small caps outperform large caps. It's called the small cap effect, and it happens nearly every January. So look for some catch up from the NASDAQ to outperform the Dow and the S&P in January. You heard it here first. Mark it down. See if I'm right. Seasonality. Ooh, this drives me nuts. Look at this. I put the blue line across here last week. I showed it to you. I said, if we break this blue line, I'm going to turn everything bullish, which means I'm going to add 50 to 100% on the size of my positions. We couldn't make it back up. But at the same time, the purple predictor is skyrocketing. Once again, we're going to start to see small caps outperform the large caps. Here, IWM is the Russell 2000. It's the 2000 smallest companies in the stock market. And it's now the smart money's buying small caps. Smart money is selling mega caps. Got it? I think that's going to make a lot of sense. I thought we'd see the mega caps go up a little bit more. But the smart money saying, nah, let's buy these small caps. So look for these small caps to really start to outperform. Look for the NASDAQ to outperform the other two indices. You can see we've got clear sailing on the seasonality. The red line has been the best line so far this year. So you can see nothing but blue sky ahead. Like I say, I think we might dip a little bit early this week and then take off. And we should do very, very well until the end of the year. So a lot of clear sailing there. That means this is when we press the metal, the pedal to the metal. We want to make a bunch of money. Now, asset allocation, where's the money going to come from in this bull market? Well, Apparently, it's not going to be coming from the bond market because here we can see that bonds and stocks are fighting to a draw. Money's going back and forth between them, but neither bonds nor stocks are getting a lot of money. So that means the money has to come from cash because that's the only thing left. Well, guess what? There's $4 trillion worth of cash in brokerage house accounts. That can all be spent on stocks. When we saw 
the capitulation of the of the money managers back in October, they were all in cash. As much as they could be in cash, they were in cash. When we look and we see the American Association of Individual Investors and we see that they are a near historic bearishness, that means they don't have stocks. They have cash. And once they start to realize that this bull market has started, that cash will start rushing into the market. And that will be the second phase of this bull market. We're still in the wall of worry phase where everyone says, I mean, I pick up the newspaper and they say, money manager, still believe we're going to go make new lows. No, we're not. That's over. And then the small investor, they think that this is going to be a continuation of the bear market. No, it's over. We're into bull market mode. And as they slowly become convinced that it's a bull market, the bull market will be fed by new buyers coming in with cash, not selling bonds getting rid of their cash to buy stocks. So we had the little bounce in the risk decator a week ago, and then they took it away. So, so look for the continuation, as I say, of the mega cap conservative stocks near term. That's the Dow and the S&P. And then look as we go through uh, December, and particularly when we get into January, for that to shift over to the NASDAQ and the IWM to become the leaders in the market. This is driving me nuts. Why? Because I don't own it. This is a tremendous bull market in global shares breaking to new highs, just like the Dow and the S&P. And you can see it's just a great bull market. So I should be long. I'm not. I apologize. Yield curve continues to break down, showing that the depth of the recession, which has so far been very mild. And in fact, last quarter, there was no recession, but we had two down quarters. We now see that that recession is going to get worse than I expected. Now, the Fed is going to stop raising interest rates as much as they have in the past. So they've been doing three quarters and three quarters. Everybody on the Fed governors has basically said, we're not going to do that anymore. So they're going to start doing halves. And then probably in first quarter of next year, they'll go down to quarters. But that still means that we're going to see 5%, five percent, five and a quarter percent Fed funds. And that's going to keep on hammering the market. Housing is already in a recession. Autos, the second largest industry, is not in a recession yet, but it will soon be first quarter of next year, and both of those are going to hurt the whole economy. Bonds, a nice rally. I told you there would be one. I'm not really long bonds uh, for the simple reason that I don't think it's going to be a big bull market or anything. So uh, it's tradable if you're a short term trader, but for, as a long term trader, not that interested. Purple Predictor is starting to degrade. The smart money is starting to take profits on this rally. Um, and we've gone over this a lot recently, so let me just carry on. The dollar, as I've been telling you now for months or a month and a half, is in a bear market. The big bull is over. Now, I don't want to say I'm a big bear, but I'm a moderate bear. And we're going to continue to see it break down. So look for it to break these lows in the coming week and to continue lower. Now is the time to be on the short side of the dollar. I kept you long for a year. Now I'm going to keep you on the short side. And if the dollar is weak. That should help gold. Wait a minute. What? 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 This is pretty weak price action. I mean, I don't like this price action. The dollar is quite weak. But uh, so I don't have any long positions right now. I think that 2023 is going to be a great year for the uh, uh, gold market. It just looks like we're a little premature. If you're a fully paid up member, and of course, if you're not, you should be. There's something, I don't know, I would suggest psychotherapy myself, but but what, whatever, whatever, whatever's good for you. Um, you know, I, I have an order to buy my first gold stock, but I haven't bought it yet. And the market's not telling me to buy it yet. So I keep putting the order in. I don't get filled. The market's not saying that this is a great bull market yet. Gold indicators, though, remain two and one and zero. So that's positive for the gold market as well. Crude oil, and I've been saying this now for a couple of weeks, it is going into a bear market. We held off for quite a while. The market has been quite stable for months on end after the huge bull market we had earlier in the year. But now we're going to go into a bear market. And so now I'm going to really start to think about, well, where's the bottom? Well, $60, that's a good first target. All right, so that's $15, $20 from where we are now. That's a good size bear market in oil. That's going to help the inflation picture, okay? That's going to cause the Fed 
to not raise interest rates as far as they had planned, which is bullish for the stock market. You got it? Weak oil, strong stocks. That's one of the things that's going to be happening that nobody is talking about except here on Wall Street winners. Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin, I think, and I have to say I'm conflicted, it should go down to below $13,000 and choke off the miners. We, we've got to bankrupt a lot of them before we can get a big bull market again. So I think we should be going into a bear market. The Fed has yet to ease, but the idea that it's going to ease should be bullish for Bitcoin, all right? Because we saw the huge bull market in Bitcoin caused by um, interest rates at zero and massive money supply influxes. Now we have the opposite of that. We have a shrinking money supply of hundreds of billions of dollars and we have much higher interest rates. All of that is going to weigh on the Bitcoin market. So net net, if, uh, if a gun was put to my head, I think we're going down to below 13,000. But so far it's holding up really well. Huh. Why is it holding up so well? Could it be manipulated? Could people be buying it to support it here? They tried to support it at 20,000, but that got cracked. Now they're trying to support it at just under 18,000. If that's the case, when people try to manipulate a market, it nearly always fails. So that's another argument for lower Bitcoin prices. All right, freebies, love having you here, but you really ought to have a fully paid up subscription and sit with the cool kids in the high school cafeteria. Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here, and I just wanted to kind of reveal with you one of my secrets of my success, and that is I use a website called stockbutler.com, stockbutler.com. And the reason I use it is because it saves me so much incredible time, and it was based on my forms of analysis. The Stock Butler was developed by one of my brilliant students. Of course, all my students are brilliant. You know that. And uh, he designed it around my technique for selecting, for fundamentally selecting stocks. So all you have to do is you come here, you go to rate, you go to best of the best. That's the name of the technique. And bingo, there's the list. And then since there's only four stocks there, no problem. Go up to rate, go down here to advanced stock list. I usually change this to main e-table, update the list, <clears throat> anything in green, I'm interested in. Now, I know that these are fundamentally powerful stocks. Now, all I have to do is go find the correct technical entry and exit point. So, Stock Butler saves me a tremendous amount of time, keeps me focused on only the best of the best stocks instead of wasting my time on other garbage. All right, everybody. We'll see you later.